As the global voice of the legal profession, the International Bar Association is committed to the legal and institutional reform needed to reduce the impacts of climate change. We recognize that it is the disadvantaged who have contributed the least to climate change and lack the resources to respond who will feel its effects most acutely. Secretary General Ban Ki-moon has described climate change as the defining challenge of our age. President Obama has warned that no challenge poses a greater threat to future generations. The IBA is therefore working to promote equity and justice for those who are most affected. A year ago, the IBA published this report, Achieving Justice and Human Rights in an Era of Climate Disruption. It provides a comprehensive survey of existing international, regional, and domestic legal frameworks relating to climate change. But it does not stop there. The report contains more than 50 practical, manageable, and politically feasible recommendations to advance climate change justice and respect for human rights. In a call to action, the report contains recommendations for states, international organizations, executive and judicial bodies, corporations, communities, and individuals. The IBA report demonstrates that the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, or the UNFCCC, is critical for us all to mitigate and to adapt to climate change. The report endorses the UNFCCC's international framework for measuring, reporting, and verifying national efforts of all states to combat climate change. It also calls on states to work to develop dispute resolution mechanisms for human rights protections, particularly in regard to the clean development mechanism and the implementation of reduced emissions from deforestation and degradation. The Conference of Parties 21, or COP21, to be held in Paris in December, will see states come together to adopt a new climate change agreement. A direct consequence of the UNFCCC, COP21 presents an important opportunity to enshrine human rights standards and principles in climate policy. There is undoubtedly an increasing global recognition of the importance of respecting human rights concerns in tackling climate change. A large number of states have already committed to human rights standards through international human rights treaties. These commitments should be specifically recognized as much as possible within the new climate agreement. As an example, I want to draw your attention to the Geneva Pledge on Human Rights and Climate Change that was announced by Costa Rica in February in Geneva. It was signed by 18 countries, including representatives from Europe, Latin America, Africa, Asia, and small island developing states. The Geneva Pledge aims to understand better the connection between human rights and climate change. The pledge recognizes the injustice faced by the poorest and most vulnerable people who are disproportionately affected by the impacts of climate change. It also recognizes that often the human rights experts and climate change experts within governments are separate and do not communicate well. This diverse group of countries therefore pledged to facilitate the exchange of expertise and meaningful collaboration between national representatives in the UNFCCC and the UN Human Rights Council. This practical and constructive initiative will help countries to better design climate action that is good for people as well as the planet. None of us can afford to overlook the injustice faced by people who are already in vulnerable situations because of geography, poverty, gender, age, indigenous or minority status, and disability. For these groups, the detrimental effects of climate change will be extreme. So in a transition to a low carbon economy, we need to ensure that no one is left behind. I urge every state to seriously consider signing the Geneva Pledge and to include language in the final COP21 treaty that recognizes the need to respect human rights while taking steps to combat climate change. Human rights obligations must inform and strengthen international and national policymaking in the area of climate change. It will promote policy coherence, legitimacy, and sustainable outcomes. As president of the International Bar Association, I have prioritized working towards the implementation of the recommendations contained in our report. I strongly encourage everyone involved in the UNFCCC negotiations and COP21 to read the report, to consider human rights as the new climate agreement is drafted, and to implement the report's recommendations. The new climate agreement will frame the future of our lives on this planet. Coordinated action is the ideal, but each of us must find the recommendation which we can apply and then take action to do so. 
we all have a responsibility to effect positive change. We must seize this moment in time and act. Thank you.